Hi everyone and welcome to my new player's guide to Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. Now this guide is aimed at players who are completely new to Divinity Original Sin, but if you have played through the game then do leave your top tip in the comments down below. I'm going to talk mostly about the character creation system, the leveling system, explain how some of the skills and perks work, so you can make more informed choices when you build your characters and party at the beginning of the game. And if you may be wondering whether Divinity Original Sin is going to be the game for you, then do check out my review, link down in the description below. Okay, let's start a new game, and I would recommend just regular classic difficulty for your first playthrough. There's still plenty of challenge in there, you're going to be able to learn the game, get away with a few mistakes, and just have some fun. So in Divinity Original Sin, you create two main characters to play through the story. And whilst you may notice that you can choose from different classes, these are not classes as such. They are just a collection of skills under a theme of wizard or battle mage. You can actually customize the characters entirely. It's a classless system. You can spend your points and attributes however you want and make your characters do whatever you want. However, I'm going to give you some tips and advice on what to look out for and a few things to avoid when you're making your characters here. So we're going to customize our characters. It doesn't matter about the gender of the characters. You can go for whatever you want. It, the, I think some parts of the text do read better if you have one male and one female, but it really, really doesn't make any difference to the game. It also doesn't matter which is number one and which is number two. So let's get in and look at uh, the options for customizing a character. So male, female, and personality, voice, skin, color, all that is entirely down to you. Just go with whatever you want. It won't affect the gameplay. But far more important, we look at the starting skills, the talents, and the attributes. So I can explain what these are. As I mentioned, this is a classless game. So these are just suggestions. You don't have to choose one of these. And this isn't even a class. It is just a collection of skills and attributes which kind of make up this theme. So let's completely customize a character and we'll show you exactly what each skill and stat does. So we'll start with the abilities and these are generally the skills that you get. You can see it's got some pre-assigned. We can actually take those out and that will give us the points to spend when we're creating our custom characters. So weapon skills are pretty straightforward. As you can imagine, if you want to make a melee character or a ranged character, well, it's pretty obvious where you want to put in. Bear in mind, you can be a weapon fighting type of character and have spells as well. They're not mutually exclusive. You can make all sorts of hybrids. But it's generally better, especially for the first time you play through this, to try and create pure type of characters that specialize in one particular area. You'll find you probably have more success. So let's imagine we're going to make a two-handed warrior out of Scarlet here, and we can rename her, of course. So let's add a couple of points into two-handed weapon here. You'll notice, however, that the points work differently. We've got five points. Well, the first point in any skill costs one. The second one costs two and then we can't get the third one because it's going to cost three that works the same i point this out because i didn't realize when i started the game and after i leveled up the first time and i wanted to put a second point into something it wouldn't let me i only had one point spare when i was playing the game and i thought oh that skill must be unlocked later on somehow well, that's not the case. I just didn't understand the system. So bear in mind when you're spending points. So obviously putting points into a skill makes it a little bit better, but it also allows you, especially in the case of weapons, to use particularly better weapons that you'll find later on through the game. Don't worry about increasing any of these too much to start with. You'll get plenty of attribute points to spend as you level up. And if you're thinking of creating a magical character, then don't bother putting any points into wand. You'll want to save those for the skills later on, which will determine the areas of magic that you can specialize in. So looking at defenses, if you're building a tank or, well, anyone else, some of these skills are useful. Bodybuilding and willpower are saving throws that any character can make use of to save you getting knocked down or to save you becoming under the influence of a magic spell. Whereas Armor Specialist and Shield Specialist are more for your tanky sort of characters. Now, under the Skills section, this is where we're looking at a lot of the magic spells, the schools of magic, and also some other skills. Man at Arms is what you would probably assign to a melee fighter. Scoundrel, lots of sneaky stuff in there. Witchcraft, yeah, there's lots of magical things and curses and stuff in there. But the four key areas of magic in the game are Aerotheurge, I don't know if I pronounced that right, that's your air spells, Geomancer, earth spells, Hydrosophist, water spells, and pyrokinetic fire spells. Assigning points to these 
will definitely make a difference because it will determine how many magic spells of each particular level you can learn. And it might always be useful to give any character a point in any particular area of magic. But remember, if you're making pure spell casters, try and focus on one or two trees. Generally, things like Geomancer and Pyrokinetic, they complement each other, earth and fire, as do air and water. But don't forget, you will be able to recruit other NPCs as you go through the game to make up your party. And very early on in the first city that you come to, you'll be able to recruit a mage who specializes in water and air magic. So you might want to bear that in mind when you're making your initial characters. You'll also get to meet a thief, a ranger, ranged type character, and also a melee fighter who you can specialize as a tank or just as DPS. I mention this now because it might affect your decisions in creating characters and what sort of classes, I say that in <laughs> air speech marks, that you bring along at the start of the game. Expert Marksman, by the way, is the one that unlocks the ranged character abilities and is very useful. for. So don't just think you're going to put all your points into bow if you want to make a ranged character. It's very, very important to get these, as are the Man at Arm skills for a melee character. Under personality, you've got some very useful things indeed. There's bartering, which you can get better prices on items for. I didn't actually use that very much, and I was brimming with cash by the end of the game. Charisma, which is very useful in dialogue, and you'll get some different options in how to deal with the various people that you have to meet throughout the game if you've got a high charisma skill. And leadership is useful as it can boost your party members' abilities as well. Craftsmanship is something that... Generally speaking, I wouldn't worry too much about for your first playthrough. There is a huge amount of things that you can make yourself during the game. All sorts of extra weapons, consumables. It is actually really good, but you'll not know what you want to put your points into, what you want to craft at the beginning of the game, and there's so many other more useful skills that are going to be vying for your skill points. It might be worth assigning blacksmithing and or crafting to one of the NPCs that you recruit later so you don't worry about it too much on the main characters if you want. It's not necessary. You don't have to make loads of stuff in the game though to enjoy it. I didn't. Telekinesis is actually very useful as it allows you to manipulate certain objects from a distance like open chests or move crates. That might not sound like a big deal but it may be the difference between having to step through a cloud of poison gas to get something and not. So that one is actually useful and Lawmaster is one of the most useful skills in the game. Not only does it allow you to identify the special effects on magic items when you pick them up if its skill is high enough, Far more important than that, it allows your character with a high law master skill to right-click on an enemy and get the details and see what they're resistant to. Like they might be resistant to fire or air or poison or various types of melee damage. That law master skill has saved me so much trouble. So bear that in mind, that's going to be something you probably want to level up a little bit on one of your characters as you go. And finally, Nasty Deeds is full of fun stuff like lockpicking and sneaking. Pickpocketing, to me, seems like a way of guaranteeing to get you into trouble. So I didn't worry about that. But the lockpicking is very useful to have a few points in somewhere, as is sneaking. Remember, you don't need these on all characters. So if you have one character in your party, and it can be an NPC that you recruit, able to sneak past things or open a few locks, well, that's great. A lot of lock things in the game... Well, you can find keys for if you search hard enough. You can also break down many doors and chests if you just want to use brute force. Not all of them, though. So I've probably listed a load of things here that you're thinking, oh, well, I need all of those. Don't worry about it. Pick a theme for your character and just go with that on each character. And remember, you can always play through the game differently in the future. Now, the talents are something a little bit different. And this is where you really customize your character and how it's going to feel like to play. There's some really cool ones. You just go and pick whatever you want. But I will mention one thing that I wish I had known at the start of the game. And that is the Pet Pal talent. I would highly recommend one of your two starting characters take this. Because this is... I won't say it's crucial to enjoying the game, but it allows you to do so much more stuff. Basically, it lets you talk to animals. And you may think that sounds silly, but there are tons of quests that are hidden behind the ability to talk to animals that you meet in the game. And not only that, any animal you see, from the smallest rat to a great big cow or something, 
Yeah, you can talk to cows. It's ridiculous, but it's, there's some really funny bits in there. But you can talk to these things, and they might drop you little hints about quests and puzzles and stuff in the area that they're in. And that, to me, has been absolutely invaluable. But basically, it's for the quests. There are some amazing quests tied behind some of the animals in this game. So definitely take this on a character right from the start. You won't regret it. Other than that, just go with whatever you think sounds really fun and have a read through the ones that you can't also pick at the start because you might think, oh yeah, I want to head down that direction and pick up glass cannon maybe for a mage because some are incompatible with other skills. Also, you start off with a couple of skills at the top here. You can deselect them and choose anything that you want. Do bear in mind that some of these talents come with a penalty to certain things as well. So read carefully before you pick them. So looking over on the right here, and we've got attributes, it's important you understand what these do, but they are pretty straightforward for most things, and the tooltips are very good. Strength is obviously a measure of how much you can carry, and it will determine how much crap you can carry around in your inventory as well. But inventories are pretty big, so don't just worry about that. But very useful, obviously, for warriors and fighters. Dexterity for ranged characters or sneaky thieve types. Intelligence is absolutely crucial for spellcasters as it not only affects the chances of your spell landing, but it can also affect the cooldown on them as well. Constitution is hit points, very useful. Speed is the amount of action points you'll get per turn in combat. Again, this is very useful on all characters. More action points mean you can either move further or you can carry out more actions. It's something you're going to want to level up on all of them. And perception. This is actually a very crucial skill, is perception. There's loads of secret hidden things, traps and puzzles, and just items to find hidden around the game. And having a high perception skill on one character, which you can then buff with spells and potions, maybe from another character, is really, really useful. So probably choose a character that you want to have high perception and just boost that on that character. As you move around in a group, you'll find tons of stuff that you would not otherwise notice. And down here are some of the starting abilities that you're going to get to choose. So if we click on one of these, we can actually choose the different areas of magic. We've got earth, fire, air, water. We've got the scoundrel. We've got the expert marksman. And these are the skills that we can choose from. Notice also that in expert marksman, as in many others, they're not just combat skills. This one also has some healing and poison removal. So do have a good look through and see what you'd fancy starting off with. And do bear in mind those other NPCs I mentioned available at the first city so that you can balance out your party with something a little bit different from what you create. But don't think that you have to have a completely balanced party. You can go with four magic users, four rogues, four melee. You might have a very different gaming experience to if you'd gone with a more balanced party, but it is totally possible. So just play the game however you'd like to play the game. It's also worth noting at this point that it's not strictly necessary to have a dedicated healer, although all your characters could get one point in the water magic, which would allow them to use a basic healing spell. You can recruit an NPC water magic specialist at the first city you come to, but you can ignore the magic altogether and just rely on potions, in which case probably want someone with some crafting skills to make more, but you can buy a lot and find a lot. You can eat outside of combat to slowly boost your health back up. Or if you find a bed, you can rest. So you don't have to rely on magic. But I will say this, it is really useful and saved my ass loads of times. Also, if you want to make some hybrid characters, do bear in mind you will pick up pieces of armor and equipment which boost particular skills. Like I had a set of lock picking armor on my ranged character, helmet, gloves, chest, which each had plus one lock picking on, which allowed them to open locks that they didn't have the raw skill points for. So you will find equipment which boosts things like that that you can then equip in a particular situation. So whether you create these characters or recruit them at the first city, I would recommend one melee character. Not necessarily a pure tank, could just be for damage. At least one character with the water healing spells as a specialization. And then two of the characters that are going to be good at damage. Now that could be a fire mage and a scoundrel. It could be a ranged damage dealer. It could be a couple of hybrids or one hybrid and a specialized mage. But basically go with whatever party makeup you really fancy playing because there is no right and wrong way to play this. You will make it work one way or another. And that's the beauty of this game. Just go out and enjoy it and play it. 
And now for a few simple tips that'll help you first time players along in the game. And let's talk about money. It makes the world go round, right? Well, it's going to be very important in your first playthrough, especially if you're not crafting a lot of your own materials. But don't worry, whilst money might seem scarce at the beginning, by the end of the game, I felt absolutely loaded. And the secret to this, of course, is pick up anything that isn't nailed down. Steal everything you can. And do be careful, of course, if the owner is stood there watching. Try to close doors on NPCs so they can't see what you're up to. But go into houses and buildings, and if you're not being watched, clean them out. The great thing is, you can actually sell anything to almost any NPC in the entire game. You can trade with all of the characters that you can talk to. Not all of them will have enough money to buy your crap that you've picked up, but it's there, you can sell stuff, and the NPCs do regenerate money overnight as well. One of the great money makers I found was the paintings that are hanging on walls of people's houses, bedrooms, inns, taverns. If people aren't watching, just go and hoover them all up and sell them. Nobody cares about buying stolen goods. So help yourself, and you've got a nice, easy source of money. Of course, if you want to roleplay it, you might not want to go down this route, but as long as you don't get caught, there aren't really any consequences to doing this, and it's a nice supply of cash. Another handy tip that came in really important in my playthrough is to make sure you've got a character with high perception and that you buff that perception skill whenever you're trying to seek out something that you think might be hidden. Or if you think you're in an area where there might be some secret doors or secret buttons or traps or things, you can buff the perception skill with various potions, with magic spells. You can also buff it with armor. Yes, do keep a set of armor with plus perception on rings, amulets. You don't have to have it equipped all the time, but do keep a set of this in your inventory because you never know when it's going to come in handy. And likewise, keep a set of armor for any other skills that are going to be situational. I think I mentioned it before, but do keep a set of lock picking armor. That is very important. Sneaking armor for those times when you're going to have to sneak past certain traps and enemies in the game. And Lawmaster armor as well. Anything, it doesn't matter what the efficiency of the armor is, you can just pop that armor on for the situation you need to use it in. It might be in the case of Lawmaster to identify a particular magic item that you've picked up. Speaking of the inventory, another tip is to try and keep it organized by using bags. Yes, bags inside the inventory, you can actually fill full of gear on a theme. Like you might want to put all your crafting material inside one bag. Then when you go into the inventory, you open that bag and everything's there and easy to access. And a very handy tip that one of my viewers on Twitch passed on to me relating to this is because you've only got a limited number of quick slots, quick action slots, then if you want to use loads of different scrolls and potions, put them in a bag, put the bag onto one of your quick action slots. And then when you click on that, it'll open up the bag and show you any scroll or potion you've got in there makes it very easy to select exactly what you need in the combat situations and of course speaking of combat here's another tip for you crowd control is key so any ability that your characters have that might freeze or stun or slow you will find absolutely invaluable freezing and stunning are particularly useful in combat especially when you're outnumbered. So look out for any abilities that you can upgrade on your characters, which are going to give you some more crowd control options. And finally, a couple of points on the magic system. I'm not going to spoil anything too much for you because I want you to have fun exploring and experimenting with the magic. It's one of the greatest things in the game. And when I say magic, I don't just mean spells. I also, of course, mean scrolls and any items like arrows, fire arrows, explosive arrows, explosive barrels, and anything which has an elemental effect well, that's included in magic. The different elements do interact with each other and there are some spectacular combinations. For example, both oil and poison clouds can be ignited by something that's burning. And be aware that fire will spread through any combustible bit of element that it finds on the ground. So you might only intend to ignite a fire barrel or an oil barrel somewhere, but if it's in a patch of oil which connects to a big poison cloud which connects to another patch of oil, <laughs> suddenly you can have the entire screen on fire, including your own party. So you would be careful about this, but do have a load of fun with it. Likewise, fire can be negated by water. So a good old cloud of rain 
puts out not only burning characters, but also big burning hot patches of lava or burning ground. And also you won't have much success trying to set a frozen target on fire or freeze a target that's already burning. So plan the order of your spells and abilities out carefully. Likewise, water and electricity don't really mix that well either. So if you want to get a load of enemies all soaking wet or maybe covered in a steam cloud and then zap them with a lightning bolt, you'll have some great fun with that. But do be aware that the enemy can use all these tactics on you as well. And they will. And sometimes you'll end up doing it to yourself <laughs> through something that you haven't foreseen happening. Also, something else you can do with magic is teleport. You can either use this to get one of your characters to a position that you maybe think is inaccessible any other way. Just don't forget that they'll take a little bit of falling damage when they come crashing down from the sky. Or you can use it a lot on enemy characters as well to put them out of the way into a big burning patch of oil or maybe teleport that caster right next to your two-handed axe wielding barbarian i'm sure they would love that but that's one of the great things about this game there are so many ingenious ways you can use anything and so many ways you can work through each situation even if some of them feel a little bit cheesy you should just go out and enjoy it and if you come up with a great idea for doing something do come back and list it down here because I would love to hear the funny situations you've created whilst playing the game. Okay, folks, do go and check out my full review of the game if you haven't seen it already. And if you've got some more top tips, then please do add them in comments under the video. Just no spoilers, please, for the benefit of new players and, of course, myself. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.